Hey guys, this is Mark Hughes for cardowners.com and today I'm going to be making a quickie video that talks about bluffing weaker players. And I thought this would be interesting to do because I think a lot of people shy away from bluffing against weaker players and they just assume that they're calling stations and the way you're going to beat them is by value betting them to death as opposed to trying to make them fold hands. But I think you're leaving a ton of money on the table if you completely shy away from bluffing weaker players because a lot of the times they're going to turn their hands face up. They're going to tell you they've got a marginal hand. Um, and a lot of times they'll have weaker ranges than a lot of regulars would have because they'll be calling turns very light, for instance, or peeling flops super wide. And then lastly, they don't really care too much what you're representing. You know, even if you're representing a really narrow range of value hands or you played your hand in a way that isn't consistent with a big hand too often, they don't really pay attention to those things as much in my experience. And I think a lot of what they do in deciding whether to call or fold is look at their hand relative to the board and decide, okay, this is third pair and I'm facing a big river bet, I'm going to fold. It's not so much, okay, I'm facing a big bet on the river with third pair, but what kind of hands does my opponent represent to? So with those considerations in mind, I think that there are a lot of really good spots to bluff weaker players, and I'm going to talk about a few of them. Okay, so as I was saying, don't be afraid to bluff weaker players. Um, I guess these are just a couple of random concepts. Um, I think it's really easy when you're playing against a weaker player to, or any player in general, to kind of think of all the hands that are going to call you when you're bluffing and to shy away from bluffing because of that. You're thinking, okay, well, if he's got top pair, he's never ever folding and stuff like that. But I think it's much more useful to think about the parts of the range that are going to fold and think about just all, how many, a lot of the times, they're just going to have so many third pair, second pairs, busted draws, you know, ace highs even and stuff like that, where they're going to fold a ton of the time. Don't focus on the fact that they never fold top pair or if they do have a, any kind of legitimate hand, they're not going anywhere no matter what. Um, focus on the parts of the range that are going to fold. Um, yeah, balance isn't really too important. So like I was saying with what you're representing isn't too important, the idea that you have to have value hands in this range uh, or in this spot to bluff successfully, it's not too relevant against weaker players, I think because they're not good hand readers, you know. If you end up checking down a value betting hand in a spot where you're bluffing a lot and where, I guess, balance would indicate that you should be value betting, um, the weaker players is not going to pick up on that and he's not going to adjust his calling ranges because you're not value betting thinly enough, for instance. And I guess this is a lot of what I was saying in the first part. What you're representing isn't too important. The absolute strength of your opponent's hand is the most important deciding factor in them deciding whether to call or not, in my experience. And lastly, game flow is very important. It's very, very important against weaker players because if they've been getting run over or you've just shown a bluff or they're tilted for whatever reason, they're going to go into call down mode and they're going to call you much more liberally and I would avoid bluffing them too much. And if you haven't been bluffing them too much or they're kind of um, on a tear or they're winning a lot of pots, I think that they are more apt or more likely to just let you win one. So... Basically, if they're losing or seem tilted, I would avoid bluffing them too, too much. So I'm going to show a couple hand examples, which are pretty basic, but they show a little bit, um, or they show a couple spots that I think would be good to bluff, and they're pretty simple, but I think they'll be somewhat helpful still. So the first hand we have here is this Jack-10, and we're the button in this, I believe. And I think this is just going to be a three-barrel spot. So we raise, we raise and flop an open ender, and we see bet. Um, a weaker player is going to check call here with a ton of stuff, and this is a situation where I'd want to be barreling down quite often, just based on the flop. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much what the turn and river are, although there will be some turns and rivers where I'm going to shy away. But against a weaker player, and against a lot of players, they're going to peel this flop really wide. You know, any seven, six, eight, nine, five, maybe even just ace highs, you know, queen tens, maybe some over cards, like king ten or something with backdoor uh, draws, basically they're going to have a ton of stuff peeling. And then on a lot of turns, they're still going to have a lot of their range continuing because they'll have a lot of hands like 5-6, 8-7, maybe a stubborn ace-7, you know, 9-6, that's not going anywhere. 